What a bullet! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Sorori now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Browno. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Yeah! Burnley won in the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And Burnley are three. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up the shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class. Burnley have done it, fantastic, Flores deserved the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everybody and welcome along to the latest episode of Turfcast Podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redmond, ahead of this weekend's trip to Goodison Park in what is probably a relegation six-pointer. I'm not sure how the Everton fans, well, we're nodding along as you can see, so I can't see Everton getting dragged into it, if I'm being honest, but we'll get on to all that. Obviously, it depends on the points deduction, actually. I do keep forgetting about that, but we'll get into that. But Burnley win on Saturday, and that's all we're focused on. If a Burnley win puts us back within touching distance um, and that touching distance, the team I'm looking at is Forest rather than Everton, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but we'll get into that. As you can see, I am joined by Judge, and he's from the Across the Park podcast. How are you doing, mate? Good, mate. Yeah, thanks for the, thanks for having us on. Yeah, no, thank you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you all that this episode of Turfcast is sponsored by Green King Sports, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch because you can wash every single televised Burnley game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, the chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. I know I am. Sycamore Farm isn't that far away. But let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, the race for European qualification, and as this weekend is being called, a nail-biting relegation six-pointer. And don't forget to download the Green King Sport app to enjoy exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there's a game on. Right then, Judge, I always like to get the opposition fans' thoughts on the season so far, but yours, outside looking in... It's kind of like a season of two halves, isn't it? Probably not even that, probably three thirds, because you start the season relatively slow, then the points deduction came, and then you just turn into Real Madrid, and then you've been absolutely dreadful again. So it's been a bit up and down for Everton, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say it's been it's been up and down for us for quite a few seasons now, but this, <laughs> yeah. this season in particular has just been remarkable in terms of everything that's gone on on the pitch equally. Uh, you know, remarkable what's gone on off the pitch, probably more so, if I'm honest. But, you know, it's had its impact on the pitch via the points deduction as well. So it's it's been crazy. Um, I think the way you've summed it up, it being in three parts, is probably about right. We we very slow out the blocks, but I think we kind of expected that. Um, I, I say that, you know, we, we, we finished finished the season fairly well, but I think we, you know, we were a little bit underwhelmed by the, the lack of activity in the summer. We, yeah. we certainly weren't expecting us to start blowing teams away. So starting the season slowly wasn't unexpected. Uh, you know, we, we picked up slightly. We then had the huge blow of the, the points deduction, which given what we'd seen in terms of the form at the start of the season, we, we a lot of Evertonians were expecting that to be almost as dead and berries that we just weren't going to pick ourselves up off the floor. But, yeah. you know, there was a, I think the, the term siege mentality was used quite a lot around that period in terms of, the players and the management team getting together and thinking, you know, F the Premier League, F everyone else, let's let's go and prove that we can stay in the league despite this this points deduction. And, and we had a remarkable run of form, picking up, I think, about 16, 17 points from 
in the space of you know six or seven games. So it was it was a brilliant run that pushed us, you know, well out of the the, the relegation zone. And you know, we, I think we were knocking on like 14th at one point. And then since you know the, the last time we played you guys, we haven't won, um, which is just incredible. Obviously, for the the irony of of us recording this podcast, I was looking to break that that took um and we said on our show or the show we just recorded on my channel that i think if we we were to win at the weekend it would be three of our last five victories have come against burnley <laughs> which would definitely be an unwanted staff for you guys but um yeah, yeah crazy season mate what's changed then because after well, you referenced it there but i think dash is very good at that he's very good at creating an us against the world as you call it siege mentality mm. and to be fair what what a perfect scenario to create it in. The injustice, or the, as you guys would have seen it, and the players and the management and the board, the injustice of, of the points deduction and the harshness of how, how harsh it was. He's the perfect manager to have there. But during that period, um, I think you won six out of eight games. That includes a 3-0 win against Newcastle, a 2-0 win against Chelsea, obviously culminating in a 2-0 win at Turf Moor, um, beat Palace away as well, beat West Ham away. So some very good results in there. But then, like you say, you haven't won a game of football, or at least in the Premier League, you may have won one in the FA Cup, I'm not sure. But you haven't won a game of football in the Premier League since the 16th of December, which was that game at Turf Moor. So what's different between how good you were then and how bad you are now? It, it's really hard to put your finger on because, you know, the personnel are not necessarily different. We haven't had a, a huge amount of injuries. You know, we've had our fair share, but certainly nothing that you could pinpoint as being a, a huge factor. Confidence in ever, is everything in football. I think it's fair to say that yeah. during that period, we were massively overperforming. You know, the players were playing out of their skin. The fans were, you know, completely behind the team, regardless of what was going on. I think the players, and you'll have experienced that at Turf Moor down the years as well, the players can feel that. You know, they know when they've got the undying support of the fans and, and it gives you that extra five or ten yards. Um, I think once the, you know, the points deduction blew over, um, we were starting to kind of maybe get carried away with what we'd seen during that period and think, you know what, maybe we can expect more and we can expect to kick on. The poor results started to come. Some of the abject performances started to come. Uh, that You know, your striker doesn't score for 10 games, 15 games, 20 games, and you start to think, well, what's going on here? Have you guys cashed out? So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things, a lot of factors, as, as you, you pointed to when I asked you, you know what the reasons are for for your season being as it, it has been. There are a lot of factors that that you know contribute towards that. I think there was a a lot of people um, disappointed with doing no, having no activity in January, and that's not us being deluded here, as expecting us to go and blow twenty million because that would be ridiculously irresponsible and, yeah. and unrealistic given the situation we're in. But just doing some loans or getting some players out, and it, that didn't happen. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it's just gradually the momentum and I guess the disappointments the fans has just built gradually and gradually and and I think the last few few home games it's been you know moans and groans and seeing that same pattern of play and you'll know yourself how, how you're stubborn Sean's ideas around the way he plays and and what he expects yeah. of his players and and how monotonous and boring that can become particularly when you're not winning games. And it's got to that now where a lot of people are, you know, disillusioned with the uh, the lack of a plan B, disillusioned with not really throwing caution to, to the winds at all, if not often enough. Um, and yeah, and, and again, I guess the, the fans starting to come to the reality that this these points deductions are not, not going away. Mm. And, and this, the, this fear of administration off the pitch noise is not going away. So I think that's all, you know, Come, you know, it, it's all contributed towards a, a, a negative feeling around the club, and the players feel that when they go out on the pitch. No doubt about it. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned there. Then we'll obviously get into it because it's obviously the big elephant in the room, and obviously everyone down at the bottom, yourselves, obviously more so than us, but everyone down at the bottom is looking to see what this situation mm. is with your next points deduction. I can't believe I'm saying that. Like you've already had one, and the chances are really you're going to be getting another one. The noises from what I hear on certain forums and websites that, that you will be getting one is is that true, or, or do you guys not even know yourselves? I mean, the reality is we don't really know, but I think it's fair to assume given. Um, the president of our first deduction, but probably more notably Forrest's recent one, which was yeah. in the same period. 
that we would or should expect another deduction. I don't think there's any doubt that we'll be getting, uh, you know, in my mind there isn't. I certainly can't be sure about it, but I would be fairly, um, I'd be shocked if we didn't get another deduction. Um, the, the extent of that deduction, again, if you're going to ask me to to try and put my best logic on it, I would probably say it would be similar to Forrest's, if not maybe three points, if you if you mitigate some of the, the fact that it's the same period of time that we're talking about here. So if you consider that the fact that the middle window of those three seasons was the biggest was the biggest loss that we'd registered. Hmm. And that middle season is now the fair the, the furthest away season, if you like. So I think if we're given any, you know, cre- not credit, but if we're our previous deduction is 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 considered and we've already been punished for that one season, you would maybe suggest that we should not get four and we should get three. But look, it's hard to it's hard to pinpoint how they really work these things out now. You know, I know they gave a little bit more explanation around Forrest's last forest deduction, and that's the one we're we're making assumptions on. Our deduction, we were we were given little to nothing to go on. It was just there you go, there's your 10 points, deal with it, take your medicine. And yeah. that was what and, and just to be clear on your channel, and I think it's fair to to do it because the, the our, our, our issue as a as a club and as a fan base is is it's not been given any real publicity in terms of why we feel disgruntled. We're not saying we shouldn't have got a deduction. I think every Evertonian would be in agreement that the club had, had been mismanaged. We'd overspent. Other clubs had had um I'd seen um I've been relegated on the back of us overspending. So that it's only fair that we were punished in some way, shape or form. The extent of the punishments and the lack of explanation around where it, how it was calculated and where it came from is what has conspired towards the real resentment and, and, and bitterness towards the whole process. And again, as a football fan, and I keep saying it's about this is about fans as opposed to the players and the management, we were still going to get paid regardless. You know, you go there to support your team and, you you know, you, the only thing you can really do <clears throat> is turn up and get behind them or do what we're doing and, and be crazy people on our fan channels and put yourself through more misery. But yeah. all you can really do is just try and get behind the team and hope that they turn up on a Saturday and that's it. But when when things are happening, they're completely out of your control and and then you get punished as a club and as a fan base, that it, it hurts that. And it hurts even more when it doesn't even get explained properly and 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 nobody really understands it. The fact that you're saying, who knows? Who knows yeah. when it's going to happen? Who knows how it's going to be worked out? It's wrong. It's just mm-hmm. wrong. And, and I think the one thing the Premier League should be held accountable for is managing their own competition and managing the rules of their competition and managing the penalties and communicating those penalties with the stakeholders clearly and articulating how it's been done and, and the process that's been followed. And we don't believe we've been given that. Um, and I just, I can't express any more how different the way the Forest were dealt with compared to us. Yeah. Like literally, when it came out, it was like, here's how Forest's points have been calculated. This is what, how we've done it. This is the process. This is what we've done. This was the timeline. It was, it was, you know, you've seen it on Sky News within 10 minutes of it coming out. I was like that. That's fair enough, and and I think Forrest haven't really has any complaints around that. And if that was the way that we were dealt with, we would not have been, you know, claiming corruption and all the stuff that's been going on. So I think it was. I just wanted to set that record straight from our point of view. Is we don't believe that we're blameless here. We don't believe that we weren't due to get a punishment or we weren't entitled to be punished with a points deduction. But the way it was done, the manner and the initial ten points was just farcical. Yeah, I do remember when the first it first came out about the ten points. Even I was saying that's harsh. Oh, that ten points, obviously, it's since been deducted to six. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm not making any excuses for the Premier League here because they should have done it right originally. But they've clearly learned from the mistakes that they made yeah. the first time around with you guys. And now you would think if slash when you do get another points deduction, it will be in that manner. They'll have the bullet points. They'll let you all know. Fingers crossed for you guys. Anyway, obviously that you do get that clarity. But obviously the Premier League are a joke. I think even as a Burnley fan, I'm, I'm happy to say that. The fact that they haven't got their house in order, as you said, the fact that we could genuinely, probably more likely Luton, if it's anybody, but somebody mm. could be relegated after the season is finished in a courtroom when Forrest or yourselves have, have an appeal and get some points back. That's that's just scandalous. The fact that it's even got to that. Yes, yeah. I do feel like they're kind of learning as they go because they've not been in this position before, but it shouldn't have been this way anyway. It's it's a multi 
billion pounds company that, that, that should know how to run itself. Um, but we'll move on. Um, obviously, you referenced Dice there earlier, and I completely get it. I feel like the the Dice experience has been a lot quicker with you guys because we did it over like nine, just under 10 years, whereas yourselves are probably, what is it, just around two now? And you're yeah. at that, you're at that, part of the process where we were just before he got sacked like fed up with the style of play fed up with the subs fed up with our plan b where 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 are your thoughts and your fan base in general with dice because i have seen a lot of noise now and and the supporters that were supporting him quite vocally on twitter have now not started criticizing him but criticizing the team and that obviously shows that they're disgruntled as well and there's Mm. obviously all that stuff surrounding the the Patterson slap. Now I know what Dice is like. It would have been a joke, and I, I don't know much about Patterson. He, he might be a sensitive soul, but the fact that it's it's all come out and there was obviously a reaction to it shows that the harmony isn't really in the squad at the minute. I think from an outsider looking in. But what are your thoughts on the whole Dice situation? I mean, to, to be clear, I've I've been a massive fan of the way he's done and, and the circumstances he's been uh, working under. I think that's yeah. the first thing to say. Um, and I would say that 70% of the fans would be in that camp of being appreciative of, of the stuff he's dealt with and, and the results that he got during that particularly difficult period. The results he got when he come in, you know, that the ridiculously good results at Brighton uh, last season where we, we turned them over, you know, 5-1. Um, so there's, there's been some performances and some periods of time where he's been a charge that you think, wow, how has he pulled that off? But then you you know you look at the period in general, and the you know the look we knew what we were getting in terms of style of football. No one was expecting us to, as you put it before, turn into prime Real Madrid on a consistent basis under Sean Dyche. You know, but but when you when you're in the the the, the run of form that we're in, which as you pointed out, if it's this weekend, it, if we lose this weekend or we don't get a result. It'll be the worst run we've had in the Premier League. And we we were one of the founder members of the Premier League have never been relegated. So that's a it's a hell of a long period of time. It's 30 years, yeah. I think. So that's a that's that's a and and when Deitch gets questions about that and, and he says, How would you feel, you know, if that, that was something that was gonna happen on your watch? And he said, I don't care. You know, I'm here for the big project. It's just like how can you get on board with <laughs> How can you get on board with that type of response? Even if it was just a, a PR response that he put out and said, you know what, look, as a manager, I want to win every game. and I'm disappointed when my team is losing games and all I do is think about trying to resolve that. You can take that comment and whether it's, you know, however it's meant and whether it's some you but to come back with that level of arrogance and and yeah. it, it was just, it, it really struck a chord with me and I think it did with a lot of Evertonians. It's not been the, the first time he's he's made a comment like that. And it's almost like that defiance now is is turning on him. That defiance was something, as you said before, as we said, he was using in the favour of the club and, and trying to rally the troops. He's now applying that same level of defiance towards the local media who've been behind him and the you know the the fans. And it just doesn't go down well. There's been a few comments he's made around the way the fans have responded to certain performances, as if to say that we don't have a right to expect better. Um, which again just doesn't help, and and you know as regardless of his words, actions should speak louder than words, and his actions have just been zero. I mean, another comment he made recently after this, um, the the you know the three week break that we ended up having because of not being in cup competition and and games in hand and so on, and uh, we obviously lost, you know, we lost a, a Bournemouth in pretty. Poor circumstances, given it was, you know, it was, it was one very poor mistake at the end of the game, but it was a very, very, very poor performance. We were lucky to even be in the game. And his comment that he made is that um, he didn't work on any new things in Portugal because he doesn't know what else to work on. He hasn't got any other ideas. And it's like, come on. Yeah, it's a bizarre one, that, isn't it? How would you, why would you admit that? You know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. I think I think sometimes, and I felt this like when, when he was at Burnley, is too honest for his own good. Sometimes, like like mm. you said, put out a PR response, put out yeah. just say something that you don't necessarily mean. But that one about him saying I don't care, that one strikes me as is as, as like I said, he's being honest. He doesn't care, and he probably doesn't care because of all the noise surrounding his job at the minute. Mm. He he says he doesn't pay too much attention to the outside noise, and he might not do. 
but it's always going to get through. And I think it's always going to annoy him if there's because I, I I understand the Everton fans' frustrations because you're looking over your shoulders and you're anxious and there's a lot of frustrations. But without that points deduction, you're currently above Palace on 32 points. And I think a lot of this anxiety wouldn't be there as well. But it's interesting because, like I said, I feel like you've had your Dash experience condensed into two years. And now you you as fans are all at the stage of, oh, I'm fed up with this now. That's where I was the season we got relegated under him. That seat, well, obviously he was sat before we got relegated, but I still class it as him sending us down um, because we were so bad for the entire season. But... You've said there, you've, you've backed him, but you're probably getting a bit fed up with him now, mainly due to the well, due to the results and due to his own sort of like stubbornness and the way he's coming across in interviews. Do you still want him there next season, or do you think it's going to be its natural end this summer? That that's the million dollar question. My initial response would be no, um, but the realistic response is I'm not sure how much of a choice we'd have in that matter. I don't believe he's. Um, I don't believe he would walk because I think he's too thick-skinned to walk. Um, yeah. Obviously, the circumstances around him leaving was almost like him walking at Burnley. Wasn't it? There was a few things that happened, I think, behind the scenes that, that meant his position was somewhat untenable, if you're led to believe that. But I don't believe he would walk as Everton manager, even if we got relegated. And given the situation the club is in, I, I don't know how he would end up leaving because I don't think we could afford to sack him. Um, if we got new ownership in and the the new owners were willing to put a bit of money in, I, I can't see how he would stay. Yeah. But if you're just asking me as a fan, I, I would prefer he wasn't managing next season. Interesting. You mentioned their new owners. I completely forgot about that. Obviously, you've got the 777 boys taking over. What What's the situation with that? I mean, they're no. not the best in the world, are they? So no. have they took over yet? I, I don't no, know if no. you have new owners yet. No, so we haven't we haven't we haven't got new owners yet. So that interestingly, um our fan fan group wrote to the Premier League just for clarification on what the situation is with that takeover because seven months ago um we proposed the takeover to the Premier League and the Premier League started their due diligence. That process yeah. is still ongoing, but the club have not been forthcoming and letting us know what's holding it back. Seven 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 are not being forthcoming and what's holding it back. So we've asked the Premier League and the Premier League have basically listed four reasons why potential owners wouldn't fit the fit ownership, fit owners test or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so we've got to pick from the suite of those four things, but all of those things basically are, you know, down to whether a director or someone who's in position of significant control is, is someone who, who's been banned from being a director before. Not sure it's one of them, but it might be. Whether someone who again is in a position of significant control within an organization is would not pass the fit and proper test, or, and this probably is the one that sticks out, that they've not been able to demonstrate that they've got significant funds to maintain the running of the club for a certain period of time. So I think one of we were led to believe, and the Premier League haven't confirmed this, but it seems like a likely scenario that the Premier League have requested that 777 put a certain money into escrow. For a six month period, yeah, to demonstrate that they've got that money there and that that can be used to keep the club club afloat if the club goes into administration within six months of them taking over and they haven't been able to put that cash up, that that would be an alarming sign. But the fact that it took seven months, yeah, it just demonstrates they've not been able to put the required evidence in place to, to satisfy the Premier League. Yeah, well, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on at Everton, isn't there? We've not had actually a chance to talk about the match yet. We'll get into that yeah. just now, but I just want to look, point everyone's attention to the bottom of the screen. You can see the names of the YouTube channel members just cr scrolling across the bottom of your screen. A big shout out to all of them. We really do appreciate your support. If you do want to join, there's a link in the description and a little button underneath that says join. You will get early release of shows and more stuff next season, but including this show as well. I'm sure some of you are watching it on early release now, so hello to you guys, but... Judgey, let's get into it then. Any suspensions or injuries, first of all, that Burnley fans should be aware of in the Everton side? Actually, not really. Not 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 uh, recent ones. I mean, that there's historical um, injuries we, we we've had, but this is probably as good a shape that the squad has been in from a from a fitness perspective. The subs that were made at Newcastle on Tuesday were were, were tactical ones. Doesn't look like there's anything that's come out of that game untoward. Um, so you can expect a, a fully fit squad. 
Um, and and you know that that being said, it's probably going to be relatively unchanged for the for the game at the weekend. I expect. I don't know if you want me to go through this now, or you're going to come on to that in terms of lineups. But no, no yeah, actual we'll come, fresh we'll injury concerns. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention Dominic Calvert Lewin as well because you did reference earlier. He got his first goal for quite a while. I think it was a penalty, was it? it yeah, was a penalty, I mean, yeah. A, yeah, a goal's a goal. But um, are you expecting him to kick on now? You, you would, you would suspect he would do, wouldn't you? Well, he's come out and actually said in his words, "The tap is now on, and I, I, you know, I will score more goals now. I've been desperate to get that goal." He, he was dead open, and you know, dead, uh, pretty brutally honest, saying that looked at. The longer that spell went on, the more it was starting to affect my confidence. Now I've got that goal. I do believe that I'll kick on and I'll, I'll score more goals. And, you know, the proof will be in the pudding, as they say, at the weekend. Um, he has been getting chances. He's not He's not been a forward. And this is where I can, I guess, give some defence to Sean Zeich and, and, you know, his, his, his staff. We have been creating chances. The players haven't been taking them. And that's where you, yeah. you could have some sympathy with the management team. Dominic Calvert-Lewin has been the number one source of those missed chances. So if he can turn that round, that would be a huge boost for him personally, but more so for us as, as a as a team. Yeah, well, fingers crossed for us. It's it's after Saturday, but you would suspect that with Don being quite good in the air, he'll be licking his lips at playing the Burnley defence, as a lot of you guys will. Uh, you mentioned lineups there. How are you expecting Everton to line up in this one? You said it's could probably going to be unchanged or relatively unchanged for the Newcastle game. The, the back four, absolutely. Back five picks itself in terms of Pickford and goal. Mikalenko, left back. Seamus Coleman right back, who just the evergreen Seamus Coleman. Um, Tarkovsky and Branthwaite, centre-back Branthwaite. Uh, uh, as a pair, they've been our two best players this season, without doubt. Yeah. Tark, Tark, as you know, is as reliable as they come. He's tough as tough as boots, and he and he's um he, he's been he's been a rock at the back. Branthwaite is getting better and better every week. Um in front of them, in terms of the midfield, you'd probably expect it would be uh, James Garner and Anana at the base of the midfield. In front of them, to Corey probably in the in the number ten. It'll be like a four-two-three-one. Or as you you'll remember under under Deitch, they have, they have a lot of players very, playing very narrow in the yeah. middle of that pitch. So we'll have you your wingers if you call them that tucked in. So Dwight McNeil will tuck in to the centre. I was expect given that he'd come on at, at, on um, Tuesday and play particularly well that. Jack Harrison will come back into the team. So it'll probably be Harrison and McNeil. McNeil's been dreadfully out of form. Um, again, you'll know that he can be, you know, yeah. he can be a top player, McNeil, but but also he can go on runs where he just contributes a little to nothing. And then up front, I was expect to be Dominic Calvert Lewin, who didn't actually start the game at Newcastle. He did start on the bench, come off the bench, and obviously got that goal. And I was expecting to, to come back in at the top of the, uh, the pitch. Interesting on McNeil there. I feel like Burnley was like that under Dice, though. It weren't just it weren't just certain players because Chris Wood was another one as well. He was very hot and cold. McNeil very hot and cold. I just felt like as a team we were always hot and cold. And I feel like you're seeing that now on the Dice. I think you're currently on one of your cold moments. But with Dice and a Dice side, you get a win and it can properly kick you into gear. Mm. Um, I do want to ask you about the relegation battle as well. I know we're running out of time. Don't worry, I am I am yes. caught watching for you, mate. Um, yes. But I do want to ask you about the relegation battle as well because you will obviously be looking over your shoulders. I do personally think you'll be okay. You've got us to play at home. I think you've got Chef United to play at home. Forest to play. I don't know if that's at home at some point. You've got Brentford to play as well. I think even with the points deduction, looking at all of them, you will be okay. But I presume you're... A little bit more anxious about it than I am. Yeah, again, it's 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 a really tough one to to be on to be fully on one side of the fence or the other. I.e., to be really anxious about it, you'd be somewhat foolish given that we've got some very very winnable home games and some very winnable games in general. But also to be overly confident, you'd be foolish as well because given the run that we're on, again, if we were to lose or draw at the weekend, which I'm sure you're you're desperate for. There would be no reason to be optimistic about us staying up because we've not won on paper what should be one of our more winnable games, and we've not won until this since December. So I said to you know uh, Mills, you as you the podcast with today on our podcast, I said, and it was a bold statement. I said if we don't win on Saturday, I think we'll go down, and I just think it had more to do with the general confidence of the players in general. Players aren't yeah. soft; they'll be looking at them fixtures themselves, and they'll know the fixtures that. And the management team are the ones that we need to win and that are more winnable than others. And with, that, with no disrespect to you guys, this has to be one of them because we're at home more than anything else. 
and because of the fact that your below is in the table, so you're not only losing, you, know, you said at the start of it, relegation six-pointer, I nodded because I've got to agree with that. If you win, you're on to 22 points. You're only a few points behind us then. We're potentially looking at another deduction. That pretty much puts us level on points. So it is a six-pointer. And I think to allow you guys three points and for us to lose another three would be, I think, catastrophic. Yep, yeah, fair enough. We'll get into some predictions in a second. But before we do, I just want to remind everybody that we have exciting news to bring you from Uphold Burnley's sleeve sponsor and the 23-24 season and a supporter of Turfcast Podcast. Uphold have launched their new limited edition Burnley Uphold card, giving fans a chance to show their support home and away. The card is free and comes with a host of benefits, including the ability to spend in any currency anywhere in the world where MasterCard is accepted, with no foreign transaction fees, competitive exchange rates and easy integration with Google or Apple Pay. You can get your card today at www.upworld.com forward slash Burnley FC. Right, I do want to get into, into some predictions for uh, with you, mate. Quickly, if I could ask you now, you've just said you'll probably change your mind if Burnley win at the weekend. I, I, I would be surprised if he went to Goodison and won, despite the run that you're on. Um, if I could ask you right now, the three teams going down, who do you think it'll be? Obviously, Sheffield United. I think they're, they're, they're gone. I don't think um, I'll get any awards for saying that. It, it, it honestly so much hinges on on this weekend's games. Um, I personally think Luton will go. Um, I, I don't think they'll stay up, and and I think it could be a, a toss. I, I still I still do believe that Brentford are going to get pulled into it. I've not seen enough from them even since Ivan Tony's come back for me to confidently say that they've got another four five wins in them, which would categorically put them out of the picture. I think yeah. four wins for them probably is enough. You know when when you're playing. They played against Brighton. I watched bits of that game and I just wasn't convinced at all by them. I think they were good against United, but to be so dominant and to still get nothing from the game, I think they're playing, they're getting so few points from games that they're playing well that I would be worried. Um, so I, I wouldn't rule them out of it, but I, I think it could very much be a, a toss up between us, Hughes, and Forrest. Um, that was a huge win for Forrest and that could just kick yeah. them on and could take them out of it. Um, but I still firmly believe Brentford are in it. If you were to put me over a barrel, given your current position, I would have to include you in the bottom three. And, I, and for that reason, I would say the three promoted teams will all go back down. I agree with you, mate. You said there you think Luton will still go, but then you were saying you're not sure on Brentford. So, for example, if we were going to catch Brentford, we have to win minimum three games of one four all season. And that would just put us level on points with them and we'd still be beneath them. So we'd have to win three and draw. If they lose them, we're not going to catch them. So the only team that can catch them is Luton, and they're in free fall as well. Um, if we win this weekend, who knows? But even then, we're going to need Forrest to, to, to go on a bit of a poor run. We play Forrest on the last day of the season, so I just want us to get to within three points if of them or two points because of the goal difference. If so you can be in the that, next one into that last yeah, game. Exactly, um, exactly. You couldn't be disappointed Fingers with crossed. that. Yeah, exactly. With the position that we've been in. Um, but anyway, final one from me. Predictions for this weekend, please, mate. I've just had a... We just, again, we just recorded our podcast before I come on with you. Um, we made to record the podcast with his son was in the studio. We pulled him in and said, go on, what do you think? He said 1-0. And you know what? I couldn't I couldn't disagree with that. I think 1-0, a gritty Sean Dyche performance... A uh, goal probably around the 60th minute. I can I can see another KG first 45 minutes. I can see you hitting the woodwork at least once. And I can see us getting a goal around the 60th minute from either Calvert-Lewin or Decore and just crawling over the line. That's probably the most specific um, <laughs> prediction I've ever had. We hit the woodwork, you score in the 60th minute and you win 1-0. Um, I'm, I'm thinking 1-1. I'm thinking 1-1, which will benefit you more than it does us. Um, so I think... We need to win. I think it's do or die for us this weekend. I just don't think we'll have enough in us. So I'm going to sit on the fence slightly and say 1-1. One, one. But before we do wrap it up, mate, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and your podcast if you want to digest some Everton content ahead of this weekend? Yeah, sure. You can say it's on YouTube. It's Across the Park podcast or it's just Across the Park. Um, on Twitter, it's Across the Park PC. Like you, we've tried to put podcast on the end, but ours was too long. So let's <laughs> yeah. go. Across the Park PC, that's uh, Twitter. Well, X as it is now on Instagram. Fair enough, mate. Well, thank you very, uh, thank you very much, sorry for coming on the show. I do wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season, just obviously after Saturday. Absolutely. Cheers, Joe. Thanks for your time, mate.